I obsess in college over how the brain learns new skills, which I've used to teach hundreds of students and many clients one-on-one, -on -one, directing learning programs for gyms, and I always wonder just how much can you actually improve every day. This was also a question I didn't have a clear answer for when a young girl asked me wanting to know more about that science stuff I spoke about. So let's walk away with an understanding of just how much you, or rather your brain, can improve itself in a single day. Despite whatever it is that you're trying to learn or do. Could be math, a language, or a backflip. To do this, we're going to break down the research being analyzed into three parts. One being understanding how your brain wires itself to learn new skills, so then you can understand the best practices to make learning permanent and go faster. The reason why you can do anything, do a jumping jack, learn a word in another language, is because of the connections between the cells or the neurons in your head, rather than the neurons themselves. These connections or synapses are the entire of your collective knowledge and skills. Without them, you know nothing. The adult human brain has an estimated range of 100 trillion to 1,000 trillion total synaptic connections. Each neuron in the brain can create somewhere between 1,000 to over 10,000 connections to the other neurons. When it comes to just how many new connections your brain can make in a single day, the real answer is incredibly encouraging and infuriating to those who want a one-shot answer. But to give you a rough estimate based upon many different studies, in a single day of learning, your brain, if you're really laying into difficult tasks, can create a thousand or more new connections per neuron, or rather thousands to millions of new synapses a day. Studies done in 2000 on London taxi drivers and another in 2011 on mice observed in both cases that tasks requiring memorizing intense spatial navigations saw significant increases in brain matter or the amount of synapses the brain created after short periods of intense focus. In the mice it was observed that the number of connections or the neurons used increased anywhere from 30 to 50 percent following the period of learning. But what does this mean? What good is a thousand or even a million new connections in your head? Well, the rewards can be quite tremendous. Loosely put, a few thousand connections are needed for simple skills, like recognizing a face, reaching for an object, or learning a new name which can form really fast. Moderate skills, like learning a cartwheel, require hundreds of thousands of new synapses, which from my personal decade plus of running around shouting science and teaching, most people I come across can learn a basic cartwheel minus the pointed toes in a single session. Hard skills like learning a new language take millions of connections across multiple brain regions that also have to coordinate with each other, which can take far longer to fully form. But the thing I've been getting at is there is currently no predefined upper limit to how many new connections you can form in a day. The brain capacity for creating new connections is theoretically limitless, as long as the necessary conditions are being met. So here's the truth for the best behavior I found and stress tested on a lot of people. I tend to jokingly think of instant learners as the flat earthers of the learning world. Parents and students who would think what I was doing was not the way it should be done, in which case I would ask them to define what learning is, turns out they had no idea, and they were basing their dislike of me and other teachers on wishful thinking that learning anything must be immediate and simple. It's not. But there is one golden behavior that gives you the best chance of creating the most new and useful connections in one session. This is what I simplified into building repetitions versus mindless repetitions. Mindless repetitions is something students, teachers, and my really old self have been quite guilty of. It involves you just throwing yourself into something over and over, praying that just consistently getting enough attempts in will eventually make the thing work. I also noticed this is a really easy cop-out for most wannabe teachers. What's harder, where all the progress is made, is building repetitions. This is where you identify for yourself or others your Goldilocks zone, the place, the step, where your brain is maximally stimulated, having to 
work on something that's new, but is not so hard to where you become cognitively overloaded, learning shuts down, and you do nothing but fail. Nor is it too easy that you don't get any stimulus at all. If you know exactly where to work at and spot what to work on, this is where your brain creates the most new connections by a lot. And the amazing thing that happens is your Goldilocks zone will begin to slide up and you should slide up along with it. This is also where you now want to hammer out as many repetitions as you can possibly do before your brain is just exhausted. Because now more repetitions equals more connections. The Goldilocks zone is also the place where you can enter something you may have heard about called a flow state. Where you become fully immersed in what you're doing and can be up to five times more productive. Not too hot, not too cold, but be just right. Funny enough, after one session, you can take a break, replenish resources, and attempt to go into another session. But the point to where you truly just can't keep going at all, even after a break, that is your current daily limit. A limit which also increases the more you work in your Goldilocks zone, and now you really should just eat some broccoli and sleep. But here's the catch to how much you can improve in one day. Whenever I've had someone make amazing headway towards a new skill or understanding of something, whether it's biology or a backflip, they always come back the next day saying, Hey Matt, or if you're an internet person, hey Trick, I did all this work with you, but why can I start off where we left off last time? This isn't because you haven't gotten way better, it just highlights something profound about the brain. The first day or time you learn something brand new, while there is no limit to how many new connections you can create to dominate and quickly learn a new skill, the first time you do anything, the connections you make are a temporary framework. They are not yet stable. This is because your brain is extremely efficient and will not commit to building a ton of permanent connections or changes to you right away. It will wait to see if you actually need them by using them again. Or if you don't, it will tear them down and save you the resources. So if the learning is not revisited, the brain tends to follow a forgetting curve, where the brain sees it was a one-off thing and will begin dismantling some of the framework you made. The the rule of thumb I've given to students is to at minimum do a rule of three. Three hard sessions on different days of repeating steps for a specific skill before turning your attention to harder steps. Hilariously, every client I've had finds that running through the steps again a second or third time is almost laughably easy, and only then have they truly convinced their brain to integrate those steps into its network. So what's the twist to all of this? As much as I want to dive back into how fantastic neural reuse is that we go into in videos like how to increase your intelligence, contrary to popular belief, one of the biggest things you get out of working within the Goldilocks zone is failure. This is because within the Goldilocks zone, you can experience and correct errors, which allows your brain to both build the good connections and hunt down and viciously destroy the bad connections that cause you to mess up. As much as people like skipping vital steps, more steps means more experience of what not to do, which also gets wired into you. The example I like to give to students is someone who muscles a backflip always struggles because because those bad connections haven't been experienced and corrected. While someone who builds a backflip is really good at not only doing a backflip correctly, but is also equally good at not doing it wrong. But if none of this was very interesting, then I saved an interesting fact for last. When you stay in the Goldilocks zone, you actually increase how plastic your brain is for anything. Because your brain learns how to form these new connections and dismantle useless ones faster and faster over time as well. It increases how plastic it is for anything else you might want to learn in the future. While in contrast, someone who doesn't learn at all will find that their brain is much more rigid to the same stimulus. With us going over the behaviors you can do to increase your intelligence and plasticity in these videos. I hope this helps and I'll see you in the next one.